Ever since I became a somewhat popular artist, I started getting a lot of questions about comics. Have I ever made a comic? Will I ever make a comic? The truth is... I have. Today I'm gonna tell you the story of how I managed to turn a graphic design college degree into an excuse to study the magical girl manga genre and make a comic that until today remained a secret. The year was 2019 and I had graduated from college with a chemistry degree the year prior. Yes, I used to be a science girl. I was working really hard on my portfolio while also doing an editorial design internship at a local magazine. The reason? To get into design school. The reason why I wanted to study graphic and editorial design academically was simple. As an illustrator, I developed my style to be flat, perfect for merchandise and graphic design work. More than just the act of drawing, I really enjoy seeing my art applied to actual things, whether it's a VTuber model or physical merchandise. I guess my end goal as an artist at the time was to eventually work for a company like Sanrio. Their beautiful lines and simple colors have always resonated with me, and I have even designed characters in the past that were inspired by Sanrio characters. Speaking of which, did you know that Life Makeover is launching a collaboration with Sanrio? Life Makeover is a mobile dress-up game with breathtaking graphics and super cute characters and clothes. Seriously, just the act of designing your character is something that can take hours because the amount of features you can customize is huge. Their new update, Whispering Sweetheart, allows you to unlock beautiful outfits inspired by Sanrio characters Kuromi and Cinnamon Roll. I absolutely adore the Kuromi one, Cool Lava, with its gothic style that is just the perfect blend of cool and cute. And the way the characters move in this game is so romantic and beautiful. Outside of this new update, they also have a visual novel mode where you can meet super cool characters, dress up in outfits that fit the theme to complete challenges, and even decorate your own house. There's dozens of outfits to unlock and you can even dye them to better fit the vibe you're going for. You can use the link in the description to try out Life Makeover today, but hurry up! This event will only stay up from March 20th to April 9th. Now back to the video. I've always admired designers like F. Kaori and Omocat who use their illustrations to create gorgeous items. Unfortunately, knowing how to draw cute girls is not enough to be good at design. I was lacking a lot of knowledge when it came to color theory, typography, composition, branding, etc. You obviously don't have to go to school to learn these things, but at the time it was the solution that made the most sense both to me and to my parents. It's a case-by-case -case situation. My first year was kinda rough, being one of the few students who didn't have any academic experience in the field. I was just a little baby. The good thing about doing a master's degree as opposed to undergrad school is that you're already expected to have a knowledge of the basics, so you're given a lot more freedom with your projects. I was asked to do a lot of personal projects without a specific topic in mind, so I used this to force my funky little anime art into the mix. Some of the most unbelievable things I got to make for class included a top 5 most popular Pokemon and where to find them infographic, a little children's book about two angels who fall in love with the same boy, and, of course, my final master's dissertation. If you're familiar with university, at least I guess in Europe, you'll know that in order to graduate with a master's degree, you're gonna need to write a dissertation or a thesis. My course was on graphic and editorial design, like I mentioned, so I had to think really hard about something that could fit into the course, but also meant I could use my art as much as possible in it. I considered creating an art book with my illustrations throughout the years, but that seemed kind of basic. So I decided on a comic. More specifically, a webcomic in webtoon format. Because I hate myself. I'm sure you've seen webtoons before, they're those really long comic strips that are huge in South Korea, usually fully colored with weekly updates to them. I really enjoy reading webtoons in my free time, some of my favorites include these ones. <laughs> And I thought the media could have a lot of potential for editorial design, from playing with types, to using color, to convey certain feelings, etc. And that's how I convinced my professors to let me make my own Magical Girl comic with my OCs for my master's thesis. What a sentence! For my project, I wanted to create a pilot chapter of a webtoon. Between 2016 and 2018, way before my masters, I created a group of original magical girls. To each of them, I associated a color and an animal, very much inspired by an old favorite of mine, Tokyo Mew Mew. My dissertation was split in two parts, research and actual creation. Now, I won't bother you much with the first part since you guys are here for some good old art, but it is very important to note that whenever you create something, you should always be aware of the context surrounding it. Say for for example, you want to sew a summer dress. It would be absolutely insane to start the project without knowing what materials to use or even what a summer dress looks like. Research is as important as the act of creating something, because that is what allows you to develop your own visual library inside of your brain. 
that you can later come back to in order to create something from imagination. You want to make a webtoon about a group of magical girls? You better do your research on comics, webcomics, webtoons, manga, the shoujo genre, the magical girl genre. You get where this is going. Naturally, if you're just creating something for fun, there's no need to go this far. But for me, I was writing a whole dissertation on it. It had to be well justified and researched as my final grade was at stake. So that's exactly what I did. I defined comics through authors like Will Eisner and Scott McCloud. I researched the history of webcomics, the structure of webtoons and manga. I interviewed a renowned webtoon author, Isaki, about her methods for creating comic strips. I am so grateful to her, she made this whole thesis way more believable. I had to read scientific articles, analyze a bunch of webcomics, check out the existing publishers. It was a lot of work. Then I had to do research on the magical girl genre. To give you a rundown, the genre was created in the 1960s with two shows called Mahotsukai Sally and Himitsu no Akko-chan. At the time, magical girl shows were targeted at little girls and they were a tiny bit moralizing and went hand in hand with the Japanese gender roles at the time. The genre went kinda crazy in the 70s and 80s as there was a bit of a decline in popularity. So there was a lot of experimentation with the genre. There were some more mature shows like Cutie Honey and that's also when they started using anime as a way to sell merchandise and toys. Then comes the 90s. The golden age of anime and manga, in my modest opinion. Sailor Moon is a staple of the magical girl genre and a worldwide phenomenon. This show brought a whole new, more feminist light to it, where the magical girl transformations allowed the protagonists to become idealized and even ultra-feminine versions of themselves. I say this with air quotes because for today's standards, we know that frills and skirts can be for just anyone. But yeah, the 90s magical girls were the definition of girl power. And now, 30 years later, Sailor Moon is still regarded as the magnum opus of the magical girl genre. And its formula still lasts to this day. Even on parodies such as Maloka Magica, and even on western magical girl shows such as Miraculous Ladybug and Winx. I also did some more research about female empowerment in manga versus in western comics and about specific webtoon techniques, but this theoretical part is getting a little too long, so let's move on to what you guys came for. Like I already mentioned, this project began in 2016 with the creation of five original magical girls. Basically my OCs. All of them had a regular human version and a magical girl version, along with a little pet for each of them. I feel the need to say that I was a little bit of a weeb eight years ago, even more so than today. These characters the characters changed a little bit with time, but their essence is basically the same as magical girl shows that I used to watch in my childhood. A group of high schoolers in a happy-go-lucky, Japan-like setting, fighting bad guys. Now let me introduce them. From left to right we have Aiko, the confident model with unparalleled kindness. Fujiko, the goody two-shoes with a huge sense of justice. Mei-ying, the anxiety-filled senior who hates cliches. Mari, the absent-minded girl who's always sleepy. Takane, the magical girl otaku who's very prideful. If you're thinking that Mei-ying is not fit to be the protagonist of a cliché magical girl adventure, you would be right. She doesn't love the idea either. While I do love these characters a lot, I do feel that my character design skills weren't exactly amazing back then. And the first thing I notice is quite a lack of variety in these designs. Diversity is something that is up to the author to add to a story, and a lot of people would argue that it's not important. At the time when I created these characters, I wasn't fully aware of the significance of representation in the media. Now I understand how important it is for little kids to see themselves on the big screen. If I were to ever redesign my characters, I would probably work harder on making these girls stand out more from each other, from height to body type to even race. If you're curious about the title of this comic, here it is. Please don't ask me what it means or how you pronounce it, I pronounce it as Smikyun. Huh? I know it's weird, everyone has secrets, okay? The setting is very simple. Far away in space, there's a magical place that was very much inspired by the witch world in Ojamajo Doremi. This planet, inhabited by little magical critters, was invaded by outsiders, who wanted to get their hands on the Smikyun crystals, the planet's energy source. In an attempt to avoid war over the crystals in her hometown, the queen sent a large number of them to a planet far away. It, it was Earth, obviously. Once the crystals landed there, the monster invaders went after them and started causing all sorts of issues. Realizing the consequences of her actions, the queen decided to send out five of her bravest soldiers to Earth in order to find a partner who can transform into a magical girl and defeat these monsters. If this sounds like every plot of every single magical girl show ever, that means I did my job right. Also, if you think the queen looks suspiciously like Fujiko... Heh. <laughs> The story then follows our protagonist, Mei Ying, on her stereotypical anime high schooler who's about to become a magical girl day. The catch? 
She absolutely hates cliches and tries to run away from it all. If you would like to read Smeekyoon Magical Girl Project yourself, I've decided to make it available on my Ko-Fi. It will always be available for free with the option to pay what you want in case anyone would like to further support me. I don't think I'll ever continue this story as I'm now very busy with YouTube and my own passion project which is VTubing, but I really want to use what I've learned with this project to further expand the Muddy Kyun universe. <laughs> the Muddyverse. <laughs> If you want to learn more about that, maybe check out my other videos and streams. I would love to hear your thoughts about this story and even about the webcomic, so leave me a comment, let me know. Thank you for watching!